As the daughter of an immigrant, you know, I've always had a really big passion for immigration and helping people be able to immigrate to the United States. It's not an easy thing at all by any means. This is really a partnership. It's an honor to be able to help them not only with their immigration process, but also with some of the tertiary things that they may need as well. We really want to make sure that this is a smooth and prosperous journey for you and your family. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd just like to welcome you um, to today's webinar, Live Your American Dreams Through the EV5 Investment Program. I'm Sonia Clark. I am the Regional Director in South Africa for First Pathway Partners. And I'm going to be um, with Asif Chipa, which I'll introduce in a moment. Um, we're going to basically today just cover the standardized process of, of EB5 and also the criteria which you should be using in choosing the appropriate regional center. And then from there, we're going to look at the important factors for the entire EB5 process, which Asif can literally break down for us um, and package it properly. And then finally, how the Tempo projects fits into the appropriate choice for an EB5 project. And before I hand over to Asif, I'd just like to introduce him. Asif uh, is uh, the Managing Director for India, Pakistan and Middle East. Um, Asif migrated to the United States uh, on, an, on EB5 and he got his green card for himself and his family. <clears throat> He's fully redeemed his investor funds. Um, who got the investment capital back successfully. And, and Asif will also be able to give you more details about the process as well as uh, project selection criteria as he himself has passed through the entire process step by step. Um, Asif, over to you. I'd like to find out more a little bit uh, if you can explain about the EB-5 standardized process for us, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Sonia, for giving this wonderful opportunity. So yes, as just Sonia mentioned, you know, I just back in 2016, I just applied for my own EB-5 and that's how I migrated to, to this beautiful country in the United States, along with my family. And that's how I got my green card. So EB-5 employment based category fifth, that's the government recognized program that started back in 1992. And uh, after that, initially the investment amount was $500,000 and I was one of the luckiest investors who just, just migrated to investment program uh, in the $500,000 category. And over the period of time, when they then the you know USCIS and Department of Homeland Security decided to amount you know raise the amount from five hundred thousand to nine thousand dollars. So the amount has gone from five hundred to nine thousand uh, nine hundred thousand uh, dollars by uh, uh, the decision was made uh, on twenty first of November two thousand nineteen. Since then, you know, uh, the entire industry, and then you know after the COVID situation, you know the 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 entire industry. Uh, you know, changed the dramatically and drastically. But first of all, I'll just take you through the entire process, how you should, you know, uh, what are the key factors about uh, going through the EB-5 fact, you know, process step by step. So, and then I'll, I'll take you through the different, you know, various aspect of the project selection as well as the regional center selection and how, you know, you should do the own due diligence about the project selection as well as regional center selection. So let me go to, uh, get, uh, you know, go through the, uh, let, me take, uh, let me take you through the, uh, the process first. This is the process where you are, you'll be dealing with three different, you know, uh, factors. Number one, regional center. Number two, USCIS. And number three, attorney. Uh, Attorney it will be the you know the one who will be managing your source of fund documents and you know who will be filing the petition on behalf of you and doing all the legal work, while regional center would be the you know uh, the body where uh, the project will be affiliated with the regional center and the developer and the uh, regional center will be considered as a single part. So you know you will have to uh, careful analysis of the regional center that I'll explain you in the later stage that how the regional center and project selection or the developer selection should be the criteria and how you should choose that with the own due diligence. Once you have decided that I want to go with this particular regional center and this particular project. Now, you need to be very specific about that. A good regional center may have the bad project and a, a, a good project may have the bad regional center. So it depends. Now, it's very important that sometimes the good regional centers. So you need to see the feasibility and the viability of the project, whether the project, because the most important thing that the, as an investor point of view, you need to get through your conditional green card and then permanent green card and the job creation. I'll explain you in detail. But first, let me just take you through this process step by step. So the first step, you're going to choose the regional center and you're going to choose the decide the project that, OK, that I'm, I'll be going through this particular project and of course the very first beginning step that you'll be to you know uh, retain your attorney to do the all the legal aspect work as well as also fund documents 
the attorney as well as the regional center will keep a close eye on your source of fund documents once the documents has been you know 100% verified by the attorney then and then the attorney will ask you to transfer the funds from the uh, from uh, your uh, your home country to the united states on the escrow account or the operating account of the regional center once the you know money has been transferred then and then the petition will be filed and as per the today's situation when i applied back in 2016 the normal processing time was somewhere around 18 to 20 months actually i got my own you know approval back in just absolutely in 18 months and 14 days but uh, as of now because of the covid situation things are absolutely you know moving slowly right so right now uh, the processing time is somewhere around 22 to 24 months but uh, i personally believe over the period of time that things will be back on track and things are you know slowly and steadily coming back on track so processing time will coming will come back to the you know normal processing time of 18 to 22 months but still as per the today's scenario we should consider the processing time should be at somewhere around uh, 20 to 24 months so once you are done uh, with the uh, you know petition uh, once a petition is applied then uh, you will have to wait for like uh, 18 to 22 months depending on the situation and once the petition is approved then the uscis closes your case and the case is transferred to the national visa center for the consulate process the attorney will be doing the same thing over here now the uh, once you got the approval for your petition the uscis that will be the third body as i mentioned earlier the regional center attorney and the uscis these are the three bodies that you will be dealing with so uh, once the case is uh, the case is approved by the uscis they're going to close the case and they're going to transfer to the national visa center and the consulate process it depends on the visa availability of your different country for example south africa india Uh, right now they don't have any retrogression the visas are absolutely a current right now but in the case of china and vietnam there is a retrogression retrogression means once the petition is approved you will not be called for the consulate process until and unless visa is available so right now for chinese investors the waiting period is somewhere around 4 years for vietnam it is 2 years after the petition is approved for india for india south africa and other major countries right now the situation is current that means the moment you get your uh, you know petition is approved you will be immediately called for your uh, eligible for your embassy process as well as consulate process so normal time frame is 6 to 8 months right exactly i got my uh, visa consulate process done in 6 to 8 months after the process is done you will be given immigrant visa and that will be valid for 6 months that means you are supposed to make an entry into united states within that time period and once you enter into the united states that means from there within 6 to 7 days you're going to get your social security card and then you're going to get your conditional green card within 2 or 3 weeks and that the moment you enter from that date that will that will be your conditional residency and that will be uh, you know uh, for 2 years that means you are supposed to stay in united states for 2 years you need to finish your conditional residency but that doesn't mean that you cannot travel back to your home country of course you can travel back to your home country and your children going to be uh, studying here they uh, your wife your spouse can work over here <clears throat> and you are entitled to work as well so uh, th- th- that conditional green card is gives you all the liberty except that you need to be in the united states at least for 6 months if you're going to go outside then you need to go for like you know uh, re permit entry re entry permit that's what it's called right to give the specific reason to the attorney and then to the immigration department that that's why you are going back to your country for a specific period of time but uh, just giving me my example i frequently travel to and fro from india even on my conditional status so that is, as far as i'm living in the united states for more than 6 months that should be all right once your conditional uh, residency is about to finish you your window opens just right before 3 months and then that it will be removal of condition so now what is removal of condition i'll explain you in detail but now for now removal of condition that means your conditional green card we need to remove the condi- condition and the condition is the the project that you have invested that should create 10 jobs per investor and that will be taken care of by the developer as well as the project of uh, status so the, the regional center will provide the you know necessary documentation with the help of the attorney and the petition will be filed once the petition is filed again i829 that is called so it is taking right now somewhere around on an average i should say 18 to 22 months but for first pathway partners we are lucky enough and we have got a fantastic track record of the you know i829 and converting all the conditional green card into the permanent green card 100% track record so we are getting a fantastic you know response from the uscis and our processing time we recently got 20 in 12 months and 14 months as well it depends on the situation it depends on the project project as well once we get your uh, yeah, we uh, we apply for the uh, conditional green uh, removal of the condition the same moment you know your conditional status is extended for 18 months that means you are still eligible to travel you are still eligible to work your, your children can study 
and every everything is going to be the same thing uh, it's going to take like approximately 18 to 20 months for your approval once it is approved then <clears throat> You're going to get your permanent green card and that's where your journey for eb5 ends because you have invested the amount uh let's say for example today you're going to wait for like two and two and a half years for your entire consulate process as well as the uscis processing that means you have spent already two and a half years in your home country then you enter into the united states and you finish your conditional residency for two years and once the conditional residency is done you have applied for 829 now you don't have to wait for your approval for 829 but as far as the ppm document says if you have completed your 829 apply for 829 and you finished the five years including the two years of conditional residency you will be eligible to have your money back so that's how the entire process goes around and in this particular process the most important plus factor is going to be your social fund document because that's how you're going to get your conditional green card and then later on consulate process and finally removal of condition where regional center and the project will be a crucial very crucial you know role to play and then i'm going to be I'm going to be explaining you in future sonia <clears throat> Thank you, Asif. Yes, that is a lot of information to take in and um, we'll gladly take you through that process step by step uh, on an individual basis. Um, for today's purposes, I I'd like to ask you, Asif, what is the criteria when you're looking for the right regional cent uh, centre and also for the appropriate project? If you can just help us on that, please. Absolutely. So this is a very important factor, as I mentioned, because the first you know, conditional green card will be more, uh, more or less will be based on your source of fund things. But now lots of uh, potential investors need to understand that that is not the end of it. If you have got the right source of fund, that is not the end of the story. Ultimately, your goal is to get your conditional green card and the safety of your capital. And number three, your conditional green card gets into the converted into the permanent green card. So the choice of regional center is very important. And for that, we need to go for the track record of the regional center. That doesn't mean that if the regional center knew, that doesn't mean that it's, 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 a, it's, a, you know, it's a bad regional center. No, of course not. But again, being a potential investor, as the, as this, because I put myself into the other side of the table, my criteria was I want to see the, the regional center, how many projects they have done so far. Uh, for instance, first pathway partners, they have successfully completed 16 projects and we, we, we are on the, you know, uh, uh, about to begin our 17 projects. So that's how we need to see whether the regional center has got any particular failure already. As I mentioned earlier, a good regional center also can have uh, the failure already. You know, there are so many other good, good regional centers. They have got a fantastic projects, but they might have, you know, one or two failure already as well. But you know, luckily, you know, First Pathway Partner is an absolutely, you know, focused and, uh, you know, do the, all the analysis and the economic analysis and uh, the study in an appropriate way to choosing right reason, uh, choosing the right project with the right developer. So we never, never, ever face any sort of familiarity. And we are damn confident and damn sure about that in future, the kind of selection of the, you know, project for our individual potential investor, that would be the key factor. So... Uh, as far as the regional center selection is concerned, we need to be very careful that whether it has got any particular filiar in the regional center or is, was there any particular bad selection of the uh, you know um, uh, project. Now, um, if you're talking about the project, right? So if you have uh, you're absolutely you know 100% confidence about the selection of regional centers, let's say for example, if we have uh, you know selected the first pathway partners you know regional center, now what? Now the selection criteria of the project. The project selection criteria is as simple as that. When I used to uh, study back in Australia for my MBA, I did my master's in uh, international business and marketing. We used to study the like uh, seven P theories. Over here, I applied that theory but into the category of four P. Number one P, product. What is the product of the project? That means whether we are doing any condominium project, whether we are doing any hotel project, infrastructure project, or if we are doing any particular you know, uh, uh, factory project, so this is because this is important to know because uh, uh, these uh, your EB5 process is not only about the developing that project. Ultimately, the project will be developed, but you need to make sure the product or the project itself should be refinanced or should be sold in a, an appropriate way. So uh, the amount will be given back to the uh, lean investors and uh, uh, so lean, uh, your first lean as well as second lean of the investors as well. So these are the very important factor in order to decide what product you are choosing as your uh, you know as a part of your project infrastructure project hotel projects condominium projects they are always good but that is not the end of it the pro the product is good but second p is the most important as well 
the place that means the location so for example if if you are building a hotel the, uh, it's a brand name absolute is going to be a fantastic thing and the project will be completely you know built in you know, right on time the developer is fantastic having the perfect track record as well but what if the location is not right then we are going to you know run the business out of it. the most important that once the project is decided the location is equally important otherwise how we are going to you know resell the project or refinance the project in order to get the you know capital back for the senior loan as well as the eb5 investors so location is very important third p people people means regional center of course and the developer itself so as far as the people are concerned as i mentioned for the regional center it should have a nice track record no failureity the right choice of the project and the developer if that because we need to see the history of the developer as well if project is good regional center is good location is good but developer is not good and they, they cannot provide you in time completion of the you know uh, the particular project and the job creation you know process is not an appropriate process for the uh, through the developer it's going to create the problem for the regional center as well for the individual investor as well that's why you know you need to see that uh, the right selection of the project is important location is important but actually we need to see who is building and what is the track record of that developer and how well they have done so far in eb5 project or the non eb5 project so we need to verify that uh, as far as the developer things are concerned and finally fourth p is going to be promotion so that means when you have a right product at the right place by the right people there is no chance that you're going to get the failure in that particular thing so these four p factors are the very key and important factors while you're choosing the right regional centers and the right project sonia uh, my next question to you as of uh, the important factors for the entire ev5 ev5 process if you can just highlight a few of those factors for us please just uh, to put it into a bit more perspective uh, for our investors absolutely so tonya whenever you know being an individual investor that i as i told you that you know once upon a time i was at the other side of the table and being an investor point of view i always kept the you know the important factors and when i try to explain and try to brief my you know potential investor i always tell them in eb5 when when if you are about to start thinking about the eb5 if you are willing to pursue the process of eb5 in future only three factors are important as i mentioned number 1 you get your conditional green card so as i mentioned the careful selection of the attorney because who's going to take care of your entire source of documents and once the document is verified then and then the attorney is going to you know ask you to you know transfer the funds and then in that case you will be able to file your petition so important thing you get your conditional green card that is the key first key factor second thing you get your capital back safely that is a very important thing as i explained earlier the careful selection of the regional center and the careful selection of the project and the developer that will lead your your investment into the safety of course in eb5 this is very important factor that your capital should be at risk that means we cannot simply put the money in the bank and you're going to get your green card no your capital has to be at risk but that risk needs to be absolutely calculated and you need to find out how the calculated risk can be you know the, the, that risk can be lowered down in an appropriate way so the choosing the right regional center the success of the completion of the project and successful you know uh, implementation of the all strategies and business plans on the timely manner right that's what the key factor in order to get your money back because if the project is not completed on time so job will not be created the job will not be created and then uh, uh, the most important thing there right on time you will not be able to get your money back so this is very key factor so the second factor you get your uh, your capital back right on time so that was the key factor and the third and the most important thing your conditional green card should get converted into permanent green card again that depends on the success of the Uh, uh you know completion of the project because we need to understand the job creation there is a lots of myth going around for the job creation as well so job creation factor is an important factor because the job will be created during the construction and during the development of the project but let me give an example right now first with first part the partners are you know doing uh, a fantastic promotion for this uh, new hilton temple project now uh, over here we'll be taking like 24 investors and for 24 investors 240 jobs will be required so now that number 240 is the key number if 
the budget of the project is not an appropriate or if the construction or the you know the development the business development analysis is not a proper and that's why we choose the companies like becker tilly right to do the perfect analysis of the company and that's how according to the report of the becker tilly this particular project is going to create 510 10 plus jobs that will be approximately 21 job per, per investor that is an extra like uh, almost double cushion for every investor so that is very important factor because once you finish your conditional residency you're going to apply for your removal of conditions over there this factor will come into the picture that regional center and developer need to provide the documentation for the entire removal of condition process and at that time USCIS will review the project that you have invested is a key factor whether it has created 10 jobs per investor or not most of the people sometimes are absolutely feeling you know they don't they know nothing about the job creation factor they are just focusing on okay the source of undocumented we got your conditional green card no story doesn't end here you need to be absolutely careful about that right selection of the you know project so that the project should complete it in the appropriate time and the right number of jobs should be created and that will only happen once the project will be finished and as per the rims to model whatever the projection of the you know uh, job creation that is very key factor so the third and very important factor that your permanent your conditional green card should get converted into the permanent green card other than these three factors you know your selection criteria should not be based upon the return on investment see lots of people you know a potential investor are thinking about hey, what are, what are we going to get after uh, out of this particular entire investment we need to understand that we are not here for the return on investment. We are here for our green card. That should be the key factor. And the second most important factor, that the safety of the capital. So uh, if our criteria is, you know, you know, uh, the return on capital, I don't want to take a particular name, but yeah, there are a few free projects available in the market providing, you know, 6%, 7%, claiming 10%, 9%, 8% returns. Simple finance rule, high risk, high return. So that definitely over here, we are not doing a high risk business. Of course, capital should be at risk, but the risk means that you are putting your money into the development of the project and you want to make sure the project is developed. The job is created. You're going to get your capital back in time and the job should. So your conditional green card gets converted into the permanent green card. Other than these three factors, the selection criteria should not be based upon the return on investment. Let me give you an example. If a particular project, like Tampo Hilton project, is providing a particular interest or return on investment to investors, and the other project is giving like 8% or 9% return. So as an investor, I should not think that, hey, this thing is giving me like 8% return, so that's an appropriate way. No, you should do the economic analysis and the, the viability and feasibility project based on the 4P factors that I explained earlier this is very important so that project might be a you know uh, the product might not be good the location might not be good or the developer is absolutely brand new and he has no, no experience so far or the regional center absolutely brand new so we need to understand the return on investment is not a key focus over here the safety of the capital and our green card as an individual potential investor that is the key factor other than that you are not supposed to think about it about the return on investment. If you are getting a return on investment in an appropriate way with a nice regional center as well as a nice project, that's an added advantage. But your selection criteria should not be based on that. Sonia. Thank you, Asif. Um, yes, I think uh, a lot of investors make that mistake. You know, obviously we'd like to invest as much money as we can into higher returns and things like that. But I think the important thing that we can all take away from this is to secure your capital. Uh, secure your green card. Um, and that is the whole purpose of you doing the EB-5 process. Absolutely. And finally, I just want to, um, um, how the Tempo projects fits into the appropriate choice for an EB-5 project. Our new project, the uh, Tempo by Hilton. As I'm going to hand over to you, uh, very excited to actually tell everybody about this. Thank you. Absolutely, Sonia. And even the excitement is mutual over here. Uh, as I mentioned, that regional center selection so why first pathway partner is the right choice for you? 
I, you know, you, you know, I have already given so many answers for that. But again, because of the fantastic track record, we have done all the perfect analysis of our past projects, and that's why successfully we have closed us every single project. Not only that, we have successfully repaid our, you know, investors the capital contribution in four, uh, you know, previous projects, and we are in the process of the next few on as the time moves on. So the right selection of the regional centers that the first pathway partners fits perfectly in that particular category. Category because we have got the fantastic track record, a great leadership of Mr. Bob Kraft, who is also a member, a president of the IIUSA. Other than that, we have got a fantastic hierarchy of the top management, Daniel and Jennifer, who have done a fantastic job. And I'm being uh, Sonia, and I'm being given an opportunity, you know, uh, to establish and, you know, cater into the market of South Africa, India, Middle East, and Pakistan as well. Right. So it's all about the team of management you are working with, because ultimately, you know, the people who makes the company, not company who makes the people. Right. So people are very important. And that's why we've got a fantastic leadership of Mr. Bob Kraft. So that makes the first pathway partners in the perfect category, fits in the perfect category of using the right legal centers. Now, why Hilton? I don't have to tell you, Hilton is a leading hospitality company spanning the lodging sector from luxury and full service hotels, resorts to extended stay suites and focused service hotels. Hilton portfolio includes 18 world-class global brands and award-winning customer loyalty programs with more than 110 million members. So that's the definition and that's the you know criteria so hilton is a brand and you know we we, we are doing this particular project again the product the product with hilton it's a best category of brand and that's why it fits into the first p now the location right at the milwaukee at the center wisconsin center and it's like it's a perfect location because it's like it has got a 20 million square foot of office space around the you know downtown business center and it's filled with lots of restaurants and shopping and a great you know a location for the you know tourist spot so that's what we are uh, we are in the need for the location right and people of course that means first pathway partner and the developer hks uh, global you know llc that's the you know the leading developers in the milwaukee region and we have successfully completed four different projects in the past and as i mentioned we have got 100 percent track record of converting conditional green card into the permanent green card that means whenever we have chosen a project a developer we have successfully closed all the projects right on time plus we have created or the developer have created all the necessary jobs required for the potential or for the current investors that means let's say for example if we are in the needs of uh, like the 50 investors or 500 jobs we have created more than 800 jobs 700 jobs right so we have got always cushion for so this hilton tempo project will have the same cushion we are targeting 24 investors for this particular project that means 240 jobs will be required but as per the baker tilly you know analysis and uh, you know business you know analysis we will be creating based on the you know 48 million worth of you know budget we will be creating more than 510 jobs that means that will be approximately 21 jobs per investor giving the absolutely double cushion value cushion value is important because uh the requirement is 10 jobs and we are creating in 21 jobs what else you know uh, we can deliver for our potential investor so hilton fits into the right uh, developer with the right regional center with the right location so of course that product that project is going to be a fantastic other than that the description of the project it will be like upscale select service tempo uh, you know by the hilton it is an eight-story building with 155 guest room 137,000 square feet of the total area 4,661 square feet of the meeting space and 4,570 square feet of the rooftop bar operated by the third party with the private terrace and 4,548 square feet of the ground floor restaurant area with the outdoor sitting as well. And uh, along with the 60 garage parking and the total rooms will be 155, including kings and uh, you know, uh, queen doubles. So that's how the, you know, the, the Tempo project fits into all the category. It check marks all the categories of the right to regional center selection as well as the right project selection. Sonia. Fantastic. Well, I think uh, that was beautifully uh, explained, you know, to our investors and all our clients. Um, I know that even our, our clients that have already applied for the EB5, they also come and, you know, they come and listen because, uh, you know, there's so much we can learn throughout the process. I mean, even you yourself, Asif, that's been through the process. I mean, you teach 
me so much. And I'm grateful for, uh, to you for that. Um, what I'd like to end off with uh, from my side is just uh, to direct you to our website, uh, www.firstpathway.com. Um, go have a look um, on our people. You'll find Asif there. You'll find myself there and the rest of the team. Um, from there, you can actually schedule a call or schedule a meeting with us. Um, I'd be happy to share um, all the information, uh, send you some brochures, um, speak you through the process, and actually see which uh, category um, you and your family would uh, qualify, um, you know, whether it be EB-5 or E2. But, uh, of course, today's discussion is about EB-5 and EB-5 investment, uh, immigration by investment. And we look forward to meeting everybody um, that is listening here today. And uh, I'd say goodbye till next time. Over to you, Asif. Thank you very much, Sonia. And thank you once again, uh, you giving this wonderful opportunity. I really appreciate it. And I, I am happy that if I can be a, a great assistant to my potential investor in future as well. And the best part that I've gone through the entire process by myself. So, you know, I'm glad that I'll be able to explain you more in detail. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me through my email on WhatsApp. All the contact details are given in the website, firstpathway.com. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Asif. Bye, everybody.